Hi everyone and welcome to The Conversation where we talk to community members in the VR world. Today we have with us Mark Eden from VR Experience in Gloucester, England. Welcome Mark. Hi. How are you today? I'm very good. It's uh, lovely weather, British weather out there. It's raining. <laughs> You know, British weather, that's lovely. Excellent. Oh, it is lovely. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, so tell me a little bit about your arcade. Tell me how you started in the uh, VR arcade world. Okay, so VR experience, we've been going now sort of about two and a half years. Uh, so started at pretty much exactly the greatest time to start, just before COVID and all that sort of stuff kicked off. So yep. November 2019 we started, COVID kicked off in sort of March so that was great. Um, but kind of the story of kind of how VR experience kind of came to be, um, kind of literally, uh, I, I've always been kind of into video games and gaming and a little bit of technology. And, and I worked for a bank for 16 years. So that's nothing to do with uh, <laughs> yeah. this sort of thing. Um, but I was always a create, very creative person. Uh, and I always kind of wanted my own shop or something like that, but I could never really figure out what I wanted to do. And then I started getting into VR, started to doing a little bit of a YouTube channel and that sort of thing, putting some videos together. And then kind of August 2019, I was in London doing something. Um, and I kind of just had the idea, like, I want to do it. And then by November, we were open. Um, so it was kind of a series of kind of, uh, kind of fortunate events that kind of came together. Somebody came into a bit of money, I managed to get some money, and the landlord here wanted to get involved and all that sort of stuff. So it all kind of came together very quickly. Um, so from August to November is a very short amount of time to get a business up and running and open and, and trading. Uh, right. And we've been going ever since, but obviously with COVID or whatever, we've been closed for a good portion of that. So yeah. it's made, made it a very, a very strange time. We've only now just had our first uninterrupted full year our two and a half years so you know no clock, oh. no, no no lockdowns for a little while and and so how many stations did you open with um i know you have racing simulators i can see them in the background but what how did you open up what was your yes. layout so we haven't really changed too much i mean i, I remember when i first when i first sort of found out i was going to get get my actually even before i got this place I had like the floor plan app on my phone. I was drawing out sort of spaces and sort of figuring out what the best use of the space is. So we don't have a big arcade. It's only about sort of 1,500 square foot. So it's relatively mm -hmm. small. Um, but what we have is four sort of traditional sort of room scale stations all running across the, sort of the longest wall. Um, and then we've got in a kind of about the same space as maybe two stations, we've got six racing seats. Six, and good. then we've got in, the, yeah, and then in the center, we've got what we call obviously our motion simulators. So things like roller coasters, a big machine gun, a motorbike, mm -hmm. um, and then our counter. And, you know, we've got a traditional arcade machine, a couple of kind of, uh, you know, your traditional sort of claw grabbing machines as well. Just mm -hmm. kind of grab a little bit extra change out of people's pockets. And it's not really changed too much, I guess what we physically offer in each one has evolved over time right but the okay. space that we've used i don't think i could fit anything else in this space i've used every single millimeter i can to kind of put as much stuff in as i can you mentioned partners are you um how many people are in the partnership so it's myself the landlord and a, and a friend okay all right so he and... came into my friend came into a bit of money and then it was like he wanted to put it somewhere and i managed to twist his arm and convince him that this was a good place to put it Hopefully he's happy about that. Well, he's not, gonna, <laughs> he's not seen anything from it yet, but I think yeah. he's, he's quite happy he's done something with it. All right, great. Um, and so uh, how other, I assume the landlord just runs as a landlord. Um, do you do all the work? Is it some, uh, is your other partner, the non-landlord partner involved in the actual arcade or is it just you? Yeah, so it's entirely me. So mm -hmm. if this place is open, I'm here mm -hmm. every day. That is no open. Staff? We are closed on a, th a Thursday. We do have some staff. Yeah, I've got okay. a couple of guys. So I've got I've got a guy that comes in every weekend. And he'll do sort of start to finish as long as I need, and then another the guy does kind of smaller hours, just kind of cover any sort of particular busy parts. Mm -hmm. um, but if the place is open, I'm here, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they kind of cover me. I think, given that we've been doing it for so long, I do need to kind of look to kind of get take more time off, as it were. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, my two partners, they're pretty much silent partners obviously they've got a vested interest and they want to see it succeed and that sort of thing but right. they don't have any kind of physical involvement in the business um i uh, short of me wanting to spend some money i've just got to double check that it's okay that i spend you know however much i want to spend right uh do you uh you then handle all the marketing yourself or do you uh give that out to somebody a company of some sort yeah no so 
everything I've done everything so wow. I sort of set up the entire place all the branding marketing uh, how everything was all set up every single bit of kit and software and whatever has been put mm-hmm. in by me um, sort of start to finish so I, I, marketing for example is something I did when I worked at the bank for 16 mm-hmm. years is I wasn't is our banking I was I was creative internal communication so I would okay. do things like branding design video video um, podcast all that sort of stuff so it was, it was my thing anyway um, and obviously that saved us a lot of money in the startup because I was right. able to do that part myself you know thousands of pounds I was able to save because I could right. do the website the branding myself um, uh, so yeah I do all the social media stuff so if the social media, social media post goes out from here it's from me uh, if you answer an email it's me and mm-hmm. it, everything's me sure. um, so yes I run everything <laughs> it's a lot of work for better or for worse I can it, say it, it is a lot of work I yeah. feel you on that one <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've got two young lads as well, so two young kids. So it, I, I think it, at the moment it's taken a lot of time away from them. And I think mm. I need to balance out a little bit. But, yeah. you know, you've got to see something like this succeed. You do, you do, I mean, it lives and breathes by the person who's doing it. Sort right, of thing. So right. I it's, feel like it's, I need to make that commitment. It's always tough on a uh, small business where in, when it is mm. a lot of the owner being involved, uh, at least in the outset. So. Um, so you mentioned you kind of made it through COVID. So what was what was that like when all of a sudden things were closed and you just started a business and that requires people to come to you? How did that uh, how did it play on your it head? It was surreal. Yeah, it was surreal. I remember I remember like the the day when it, we first officially went into lockdown, or the day technically the day before, I guess. And we were sort of uh, me and the, well, the other member of staff were here, and it was just dead. We ended up did have one person come in. People were cancelling the bookings over and over again, so we, we, everything was pretty much stopped. So this mm-hmm. one, this one we had on that last day, and like looking outside the window because we look out onto the high street, it was dead. It was like yeah. a ghost town. It was weird. Um, and then obviously being closed is weird. It's uh, never seen this sort of thing happen before. And being a new business, I've not owned my own business before. Well, I have, but not the same sort of thing as this. Um, uh, and it was unprecedented you know being closed not being not having to open and just sitting back and just being unsure about what's yep. going on because you know it was, it was out of our hands really exactly, you know, we yeah. couldn't do anything and so Weird. how long were you closed and was it like closed then open then close it up or, or was it just a length of time so i think the first lockdown was march till june mm-hmm. i think it was then we closed in the december for uh couple of months i'm trying to think exactly where it was and then we were closed for another sort of three or four months so it was overall we've probably been closed like nine or ten months overall wow. in wow. that two and a half year period so yeah. like i said before uh we've, we've only just had a full year of actual trading so we don't know what parts of the year should be busy or quiet mm-hmm. you know we just don't know um and even now because of covid still having an impact people obviously still a little, still a little bit sure unsure about what doing stuff don't know what if COVID never happened would be would be, be busier at right. certain other times I, right. I couldn't tell you okay just have to kind of suck it and see when you guys um so when you reopened let's say after december uh whenever that closed down was did you find it took a while to get people back in again uh since you your first three months you did pretty well but now it's been a, a year yeah. or so yeah so I, yeah funny enough i've looked back on kind of you know how much we took and stuff compared to like so when we opened in May last year, mm-hmm. after the, that sort of second lockdown, um, comparing that May to this May, it's night and day. Like we 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 took probably like a third of what we've already taken already in that month, mm-hmm. and then it slowly picked up. Yeah. To be fair, when it got to the summertime and the kids were off in the August, the July, July and August, it picked up, mm-hmm. and it was great. But it did take that little sort of few weeks to pick back up again. Sure. sure. Um, and then everyone, everyone. I guess people are kind of a little bit unsure about booking too far in advance. So we don't. don't I don't feel like we're getting a lot of stuff booking mm. too far that's, in advance. That's interesting. Yeah. People. Are, yeah. I think people are kind of holding off and just you know, still a little bit unsure. Right. I don't think we're going to go into any more lockdowns, but I guess we can't say for sure. Right. I mean, who would have thought we would have been in a lockdown at all ever? So. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Um, so tell me, um, <laughs> you're a user of Synthesis VR. Um, how did you mm-hmm. get? Uh, how did you start using Synthesis VR? Was it a search? Was it so, uh, somebody mentioned it? I'm not sure exactly where I came across it, um, but there's obviously other platforms as well. So I did try a few, mm-hmm. and I was installing them on my home PC because we hadn't had the arcade yet, and sort of test it and see what would work. 
And I'll be honest, I think I think the biggest pushing factor initially for getting synthesis over anything else was the Project Cars Pro support. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so I think you got yeah. I'm trying to think. I think you guys had Project Cars Pro before anybody else. Mm -hmm. I think initially, and that's and I'll be honest, that's probably my mo my main driver because I had the six racing seats. I wanted to kind of wanted something cost effective. Yeah. I knew it run nice and easy because you just press a few buttons, just starts and races. Right. It was great, and that was obviously save us a lot of time and effort. Um, but I've obviously you know since two and a half years in, I know that I, I know what the other platforms are. I've, I did try them, um, and the way kind of synthesis works, I can't see myself ever changing. Mm. To be fair, I. I can't. I can't see what somebody else would offer that synthesis doesn't already right. uh, yeah. for what I need it for. And I don't even use all of synthesis. I, yeah. I the way I run certain things, I run it the way I want to run it, which okay. is the great thing about how it runs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, um, what do you think the 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 best features you've used are in in terms of that? So, what are the highlights that you're using from synthesis? So the main, I mean, the main thing it manages my the, my main four stations brilliantly. Mm -hmm. So being able to kind of start the sessions, set them for like custom durations, uh, set up different types of experiences that have different games in them, creating the categories to make it easy for people to find stuff. I mean, it 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 does that great. So I can set up different types of experiences that just do all sorts of different things. Like it's for example setting up certain experiences where you can't see a timer but some sessions right. you can see a timer because you wouldn't want a session timer to disappear for, for whatever reason um or like locking down the menu button so they don't accidentally press it on game on sessions where they only have one experience that we let them have right. rather than lots of different experiences those little sort of quality of life things do make a big difference and and i'll, I'll be honest i've made a few of those suggestions to yourselves and came and and usually you you go oh yeah we're already working on that and like, here it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, quite often <laughs> I've been kind of like oh I wish it did this and came and be like yep here you go we're oh, anticipating oh, all, all the not always the case all the stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, or, you mentioned content and uh, do you have like a, a hmm. large library or is it you have a specific so we one? offer yeah so our main sort of session is the kind of the hundred plus games mm -hmm. that's kind of how we kind of pitch it. Um, I'll be honest. People probably play about twenty of them realistically, but I guess a gambling factor is oh, a hundred games I can play, yeah. uh, which is a blessing and a curse in a way. Uh, majority of those games are licensed through Synthesis um, because that that's great because it just tracks it per minute sort of thing rather than um, locking ourselves into any sort of long contracts with any particular games. Being able to play just per minute for so many different titles and they only get used maybe for five minutes a month for some of them, then it's perfect. Um, but there are other games and stuff. Obviously, the great thing with synthesis is you can then kind of choose so with some games whether you want even lifetime licenses, and you don't have right. to pay ever again. Uh, you just pay a larger fee to start with, or a yearly, or monthly, or whatever. And you can swap and change and choose. And um, like things we've had, like Super Hot, for example, is very popular. Mm -hmm. But being able to have a couple of licenses on a monthly license, and they kind of float between the stations. Yeah. And if people use more, it just goes just goes to per minute. So it really makes it kind of like quite flexible in how kind of it gets charged. Sure. And it's been and the integration with the Project Cars. I mean, that's a blessing and a curse in a way because Project Cars, as we all know, is not kind of as itself supported as much as it should be mm. um, by the developers, not by not by Synthesis. But you guys are still kind of pushing, making the quality of life changes to make that still run best it can run mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um the leaderboard um sort of for example uh i know came and put a lot of work in that probably specifically for me to be fair not so long ago a few weeks back and made it even better custom kind of how i wanted it and how i needed to use it um which you know, is great you know saved me saved me some money because i was paying extra for so a different bit of software right and now that's right. built into synthesis yeah you know? And there's more Track, to come. Tracking fastest times, I think. More to come. Oh, exactly, yeah. So other than your racing simulators, which of course have only one game, so that would be the most popular in the racing simulators, uh, what are the yeah. most popular games for the, the the room scale stuff? What what have you found to be the most Although, although you say that, the, the racing isn't the only thing we use the racing seats for. Oh, what do you use it for? What else? We do... Yeah, so we 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 license Vox Machina. Okay. So I don't know if you know what that is. That's the sort of mech robot type yeah. game. So we licensed that directly. Uh, it was a perpetual license, so we could just use it forever. Yeah. And it's more than more than pay for itself. Oh, but what it is to enable us to use. So we've got the six racing seats. Mm -hmm. People just sit in them. We give them an Xbox controller, 
got the headset on, and then they just battle each other on a private server <laughs> for uh, however many rounds you want them to do, and it and it works. So that was always my concern with because the, the room scale stuff, yeah. I think, sells itself. It it's so easy to fill up at the weekends that sort of thing. The racing, I struggle. Mm. Not that people don't like the racing, because they do, but it does cause the most motion sickness. Right. So it can put some people off because it feels so real. It's probably the most, it's the thing that gives people motion sickness. And then the robot game just give us, gave us another option for that space. Because the room scale stuff, as you're, you're aware, aware, we have the session where you can have 100 games. Mm-hmm. We also have our VR gun games where we, we have sort of uh, HTC Vive controllers in a shell yeah. and people can shoot zombies, dinosaurs, or whatever. We have our VR escape rooms. Um, mm. So we have, um, what else do we have? Whatever other stuff as well. I can't even think about it. But, um, and our zombie experiences and that sort of thing, like propagation, top squad, which right. is something I think right. you can only get through synthesis, can't you? Uh, um, the top squad, you can top squad. Through, yeah. Synthesis. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's amazing, that, yeah, that game is. Yeah. Uh, I sell that as a, a standalone thing, and people love it. And they yeah. quite often fail it, and they'll come back and try again. Yeah. That's great. Um, so yeah, so the options and the flexibility of a room scale station far outweigh the racing. So right. we had to kind of keep trying to find other things to kind of stick over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still every day kind of trying to think of what I can stick in the racing seats. Mm-hmm. Um, I've tried all sorts of different things, um, and so far I think between Project Cars and the Vox Machina game, which we call VR Arena Robots because Vox, Vox Machina means nothing to everyone. Um, it's too hard to explain. Uh, <laughs> But between those two, it's definitely kind of added another level of kind of, you know, income right. for the racing. Right. You know, the, yeah. the weekend we had lots of people playing robots. Okay. Um, but in your... again, we still use synthesis to manage those sessions. Right. So we still yeah, start up the that, session yeah. and still launch the game. Yeah. So even though the game isn't licensed through synthesis, right. synthesis can still manage the session that it's in. Right. And the timer right. and stops it and starts it and all that sort of stuff. So that's great. You know. Yeah. And um, so I know you mentioned different experiences. Uh, do you see like a lot of people doing like your your there's a prevalent amount of VR escape rooms, for example, versus mm. um, your zombie thing? Or do you find the zo- like like propagation being a really one of the more popular things that people jump into over anything else? Yeah. I mean, our, our standard sessions are probably the, the most popular by, okay. by far. Um, escape rooms, zombies, zombies, that sort of thing. A um, couple of the sort of standalone stuff. They're still very popular. The gun games. I think people see a gun controller, even though we know it's just a plastic shell around a controller. Right. They think it looks amazing. You know, it's got a light on it, but it's literally just a light. But right. it looks cool, uh, and it does draw people in. We have the guns behind the counter at all times, sort of things. So when people walk in, it's one of the first things they see, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Ooh, what's that? What are they yeah. used for?" Yeah. Um, and uh, they love it sort of thing. So, okay. And I think a lot of it is because that's what people have seen. When they sure. think about VR, they may, they may think cardboard headset, whatever, with the phone mm-hmm. in, whatever. But a lot of people these days, it's the standing up, playing some games that they've seen, they want to try. Yeah. Um, and obviously the great thing about places like, you know, like ours is that they can play multiplayer VR. Yeah, and that was going to be my I next question. We, yeah, I think for us, I mean... Obviously, the Oculus Quest 2 has taken off. Everyone's getting one. Or not everyone's getting one, but a lot of people get one. People are sort of saying, well, why would people come to a VR, come to a cave? But you may have one VR headset. You may have mm-hmm. one Oculus Quest 2. You may have two, but do you have space for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in in your house, in whatever? You just mm-hmm. don't, do you? People right, wouldn't. Right. Um, and in the UK as well, like houses are smaller. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can have a VR headset in my living room, but that'd be it. <laughs> like right, I, you know, right. if I swing too far, I'm gonna be punching something. Um, <laughs> it's always so the, having space, sort of space, space. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, and that's what we offer as well—a safe space where people can't hurt themselves or our kitten. You know. Um. So, um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned something I meant to ask earlier. Uh, the um, headsets you use. What do you use for headsets? So we started with the Oculus Rift S headset on our sort mm-hmm. of room scale. When we, once we earned a little bit of money, we replaced them. So now we have Valve Index headsets with the Knuckles okay. controllers. Great. Um, and they've been great. I, I, can't, yeah. I can't fault them. I've had my four headsets up, no problems with the headsets. Occasional cable, maybe. Just, just right. We've got things in place to stop cables getting twisted. But eventually, wiggling of cables will eventually go. But Knuckles controllers, I've probably placed maybe two. But they mm-hmm. will just naturally break over time. Because we're using them mm-hmm. far more than any... A sort of normal person would ever use a VR, a right. VR controller right. for. So you expect them to uh, break eventually. 
your simulators, what do you use for those? So they do still use the Oculus Rift S. Okay. So we've got so six of those. But yeah, they, that works really well. Steering wheels, we've got enthusiast level sort of uh, Thrustmaster steering wheel. Uh, nice seats. We've got vibration in the seats. The seats don't mm -hmm. move because they're so close together. Um, if, we, if they had motion in them, they would obviously bump into each other. So you need sure. more space. So we've squished six of them into the space of probably where you realistically fit three if you had motion. Yeah, um, yeah. Right. And we've got like the, the, so the kick buttons got in the seat and then we've got the wind as well. So the faster they drive, the more wind that blows. And we've got software that kind of manages all that together. Um, wow. So it, it works really well. And, and to be fair, people, we get people doing the racing and they still genuinely think that the seat is moving, even though it's not. Like they, they're, they're, they're like all over the place right. driving. And they, right. they're, they're so immersed, they think yeah. it's actually moving. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. It's pretty, pretty, um, pretty trippy. So uh, a couple more questions. Uh, one is, go back to synthesis. Um, uh, if you were to, if you had another person looking to open up an arcade and were looking for a solution like synthesis, and they came to you and said, hey, do you recommend it? What is your, what's your recommendation level, I guess? Yeah, well, I mean, from my, my point of view, absolutely. Hmm. I think, I don't know whether it's more than anybody else, but I know that I've kind of made some requests and sent in some interesting emails to yourselves about sort of the certain things and what we wanted to do and sort of things. So the, the level of support just on its own has been great. Um, hmm. Obviously yourself, Cayman. Uh, I, the amount of things I've probably put, put that poor guy through. Uh, I'm sure I owe him many and many a beer if I ever do meet up with him. Um not that you know like anything bad's ever gone wrong but like yeah. i was making weird requests especially when we had the rift s headset for example right the amount of times that games wouldn't work for whatever reason and he would look into it you know you you you'd spend a bit of time sort of trying to help um vox machina when we very first got that that wouldn't launch for some reason via synthesis looked into it it's now fixed that's perfect you know so mm. you even though we're not licensing that game from you from you, you still took the time to kind of look into it and kind of fix it for us yeah. um and, I, and like I say, I don't even I don't literally use all the features. Right. Um, I use a separate booking system, just cause, mainly because I just like the I prefer the way it looks. Um, that's kind of how I am. Uh, but and we don't kind of schedule any of the sessions with Synthesis, but we just launch them. But the mm -hmm. flexibility on how we can launch them and which stations we put into each session and all that sort of stuff just works perfectly the way we want it to work. And okay. you know. I can't. I can't see. A re, you know, absolutely, I would recommend it to anybody who wanted to use it. Great, great. And I'd, 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 you know, and I'd help help them probably do it. To be fair, set it up. That's that's the beer. That's the trade off for the beers. <laughs> for the beer, yeah, yeah for the beer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and last question: um, uh, What um, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to add into um, to this, uh, or you know, some mm. questions that I might know, I should have asked that I didn't. No, I don't think so. Great. And we offer sort of uh, sort of the outdoor skate rooms as well, but that's kind of like not related to VR and that mm -hmm. sort of thing at all, anyway. Um, but it's it's a tricky thing, I think. You've when you're doing this sort of business, is you've got to try and look for it to squeeze every single penny you can out of every single thing you've got. Yeah. Um, which is what I'm always trying to do. Uh, right. But also, I had to offer good value because you need to get people coming back with these sort of things. Yeah, um, yeah, we do, which I think, and that, and and uh, yeah, maybe it sounds a little bit cheesy, but I do think synthesis helps that because the the menu system and everything like that, like that a smooth experience mm -hmm. for people to get in and out and stop and start and push out messages to people, like audio messages and all sorts um, of extra features, like even like, even like shutting down the arcade at the end of the day, and you know, I press a button on synthesis right. and it does most of that for me. Right, right. <laughs> Customers don't see this, don't, you know. But you yeah. know, it just makes my life easier. Because I can come in a little bit later because I can press one button and it all turns on. Yeah, yeah. You don't it doesn't have to be all specifically customer related, but yeah, great. Yeah, great. exactly. All right. Uh, well, uh, Mark, thank you very much for uh, joining us and uh, answering all our questions. And thank you, right. everyone else, for uh, joining us in the uh, this episode of the conversation. Have a great day.